Many years ago, there lived a lazy man called Odibo and his hard-working wife called Aimiosho. Odibo and his wife were blessed with six beautiful daughters, but he always acted as if he had no child because he didn't have a son. Odibo was so lazy that his wife was the only one providing for the family. He would spend all his day drinking palm wine and when he comes home at night, he would sleep like a log of wood. His nori usually wakes up everyone in the house. Those days, it was a taboo for a woman to go to school. So their children would have their mother in the farm. Aimiosho single-handedly raised her daughters to be respectful children in the society. One day, Aimiosho discovered that she was pregnant and she shared the news with Odibo. But instead of him to be happy, he started raining insults on Aimiosho, saying all she knows how to do is to only give birth to girls. Aimiosho was not surprised because she knew the kind of man she married. Months later, she went into labor, which almost took her life. She had a baby boy. The baby's head was so big that she thought she wouldn't make it out of the midwife's house alive. When Odibo heard that it was a boy, he was so happy and ran to the wife to celebrate. They named the boy Oyafo, which means suffering has ended. And they called him Oya as a short form of his name, which means suffering. Oya grew up to be a very sports child because his father never allowed him to do any work. The only thing he was good at was his books. His mother and sister would go to the farm, but Oya would stay with his father at home and eat the food they had prepared. When he was 10. He still didn't know how to roast his yam or even wash his clothes. His mother and sisters would do everything for him. He was so spoiled to the extent he would wake up in the middle of the night to demand for food and his father would instruct his sisters to go and prepare it. For him. Although he was a sports child, but in his father's eyes, he was his greatest achievement. When Oya finished his basic sis, he had no choice but to go to his auntie's house in the town to continue his education, as there was only primary school in the village. Oya's mother prepared his bags and they went to the town. It was a 10 hour walk because there was no means of transportation in the village. When they got to the house, Oya was welcomed with open hands. He was happy as there were other children in the house. But Aimiosho had other plans. She had chosen her sister's house so that Oya could be disciplined. She told her sister all about Oya's behavior and she promised to help her remedy the situation. When Aimiosho left, his auntie told Oya all the house rules and the punishment for breaking them. 
At first, Oya thought it was a joke till he broke one of the glass in the lantern. His auntie gave him the beating of his life. This went on for weeks and Oya decided to escape but he didn't know his way and he was returned back to his auntie by a vigilante group. His auntie dealt with him and told him that he needed to change his ways. Oya struggled with the new environment till he got used to it. When he visited home for holiday, everything felt strange to him and everyone was surprised because of his change in character. He started helping around with chores in the house and he also went to the farm. His father was angry and told him not to touch anything and that he should always ask his sisters to do it for him. This made Oya so uncomfortable in the house. He went back to his auntie's house and continued to live with them even after his secondary education because that was the only way he would stay away from Odibo's influence. Oya told everyone to start calling him by his full name, Oyafo, which means suffering has ended. He further studied at the College of Education and got a job at the Ministry of Education after. This made the entire family proud and his parents were respected all through the village. This is the end of this story. Thank you for listening to this story. Please like and click on the subscribe button for more interesting stories. I'll see you in our next story time.